the DMPC handicap hurdle will close day one then and this is a two and a half mile handicap this time naught to 110 so quite a low grade hurdle there won't be too many in this I wouldn't have thought La Paz Moose at the top of any Gerard Viper strike for Paul Rhodes Alexia Squadron Darren Thompson Karma Rouge Island Alex Cherry St Jude Paul Rhodes Clifton Hassel Ryan Costello Jenny Jingle and Billy Vodden Tapper for Thomas Rogers Montparnasse Mo Redwood for Martin Leadham Glowing Shrew for James Shade Chalk Morning Ryan Costello Windchime Alex Cherry Patchy de Polder for Obi-Wan and Lexington performer Vinnie Gerard so 14 then in this and they're called in and away what a big field for a low grade hurdle as they make their way then towards the first so the race kit must handicap the hurdlers a little bit um, less fiercely than it does the chasers because there's not many chasers under 110 these days they get over the first and a wind chime is just about the leader from Viper Strike second and St Jude third then comes Alexia Swadron and La Paz Moose with Jenny Jingle and Karma Rouge Island as they get over flight number two and wind chime or Alex Cherry is the clear leader by a couple of lengths as they get to flight three. Looks they all get over Lexington performer just about the back marker. Jenny Jingles also towards the back. But wind chimes in front from the only grey in the field this time. That's Viper Strike and Alexia Squadron and St. Jude with just behind them Glowing Shrew and La Paz Moose. And Karma Rouge Island after that, and then Montparnasse Redwood and Clifton Hassel as they get over flight number four. Looks they're all safely over. And Pasha de Polder now taking a turn in the tail end Charlie position, but it's Wind Chime that leads by about three or four lengths to Alexia Squadron in second, Viper Strike the Grey third, Stablemate St. Jude is fourth, then Glowing Shrew and Karma Rouge Island, and then La Paz Moose and uh, Chalk Morning, and Lexington Performer. And there's about four or five in a line there at the back, Billy Rodden Tapper, Montparnasse Ridwood in the purple as they take. Flight number five, Montparnasse Redwood is now the new back marker, but it's Wind Chime who's continued to lead all the way so far. The back marker spot has changed three or four times, but the lead has not, and that's remained in the possession of Wind Chime for the whole of the race so far. As they race, then past the chair, they come past the water, jump past the winning post, not necessarily in that order, and then swing out left handed for one more circuit of the track, a final circuit of the track. Today, back tomorrow for Grand National Day. A rather small looking field in the big one this year. Only just 28 runners, I think it is, for the Grand National. So, not the full 40. So, it'll still be a good race. Plenty of horses in with a decent chance this season, I think, as well. So, Wind Chime is the leader by about two to Alexia Squadron, who's back in second. And then Viper Strike is third. And Glowing Shrew on the inside in fourth. With Lexington performer and Karma Rouge Island. St. Jude is now a little bit wider on the track. And it's just dropped back a little bit. Pasha de Polder is the one that's making eye catching progress in that yellow jacket with the orange patches on the arms. And it's Wind Charm in front. Leads by two to Alexia Squadron. With Viper Strike third, St. Jude fourth over the seventh flight. They go. A mistake there was by La Paz Moose. And that one has dropped back just a little bit after that. But Wind Chime still leads from Alexia Squadron, St. Jude third. Over the eighth they go, good jump there by St. Jude. Mistake at the back by Clifton Hassel has now seen that one take over back marker duties. But Wind Chime is not surrendering the lead, but he might do now after rattling that flight and really not jumping it well at all. And now St. Jude and Viper Striker closing, but Wind Chime is really being pushed along to, re to retain that lead. And I don't think he was headed. So Wind Chime is still but in the lead all the way then. St. Jude is second. Viper Strike is third, and then Alexia Squadron, then Lexington Performer, glowing through Pashu de Polder is continuing to make ground as they get over the third last. They've only got two more flights to take now. Then Wind Chime is back in the lead by length to St. Jude in second, and then Alexia Squadron and Viper Strike, Lexington Performer, Pashu de Polder is steadily making ground. Then comes glowing through Jenny Jingles, another one that's running on from the back as they now make their way towards the final two flights, and suddenly Wind Chime has found himself three lengths clear again. Wind Chime is kicking on again in the lead from St. Jude and Viper Strike. Pashu de Polder is now fourth. Coming down towards the second last. Wind Chime landed in the lead from St. Jude. Pashu de Polder is still getting closer. Also 
talk morning is beginning to get into it and running on from the back Jenny Jingle down towards the final flight wind chimes coming to the end of his tether St Jude is fighting back Pashu the polder is still there here comes Viper Strike as well but St Jude hits the front and St Jude takes it up Jenny Jingle is flying it's Pash St Jude from Jenny Jingle and as they race it up towards the line St Jude in the lead but Jenny Jingle's getting ever closer it's just St Jude Jenny Jingle second Alexia Squadron wind chime talk morning all the way back to Montparnasse Redwood and Paul Rhodes takes the final race of the day with St Jude uh, Jenny Jingle second so St Jude takes it for Paul Rhodes Jenny Jingle for Thomas Rogers was second Alexia Squadron for Darren Thompson third wind chime for Alex Cherry the long time leader was fourth and Pasha Napolda for Obi-Wan was fifth